The following is a presentation of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. In cooperation with the Canadian Wildlife Service and other state, provincial and private conservation partners, the 57th Annual Waterfowl Breeding Population and Habitat Survey is now complete. In May and June 2012, Air crews flew more than 2 million square miles of waterfowl habitat across large segments of the U.S. and Canada. Ground crews surveyed a part of the same area to validate the aerial survey numbers. During the surveys, the pilot biologists and their crews posted their flight observations on the flyways.us website. The crews then worked with biologists from the Migratory Bird Program to summarize habitat conditions, determine breeding population estimates, and draft detailed species reports. This video gives a brief overview of 2012 habitat conditions and waterfowl population estimates across this large survey area. Much more detail and insights from the survey crews are available on the flyways.us website. Habitat conditions were not as good as they were last year. The southern portion of the traditional and eastern survey areas were characterized by a mild winter and an early spring, with average to below average moisture. The total pond estimate for Prairie Canada and the U.S. combined was 5.5 million, which is down 32% from last year. Pond counts in Prairie Canada were down 21%, but remained above the long-term average. Following completion of the survey, the Canadian prairies received above average precipitation, which may improve habitat conditions for later nesters and brood rearing. The U.S. prairie pond count was down 49% from last year, although it remained close to the long-term average. Last year, nearly all of the north-central U.S. was rated as good to excellent. This year, only the Coteau region of North and South Dakota was rated as good and no areas were rated as excellent. Drastic wetland declines in western South Dakota and Montana resulted in mostly poor to fair habitat conditions in those areas as well. Despite the poorer habitat conditions, population abundance estimates are good for this breeding season. In the eastern survey area, which includes Maine, the Maritimes, Quebec, and eastern Ontario, the estimate for American black ducks was 11% higher than last year. Estimates for mallards, green-winged teal, bergansers, golden eyes, and ring-necked ducks were similar to last year. In the traditional survey area, which includes the north-central United States, south-central and northern Canada and Alaska, the 2012 total duck population estimate was 48.6 million birds, an increase of 7% over last year's estimate. Population abundance estimates were up this year for mallards, canvasbacks, green-winged and blue-winged teal, gadwalls and northern shovelers, and all remain above the long-term average. The combined lesser and greater scop estimates were also higher than last year, but only slightly above the long-term average. The American Widgeon estimate was similar to last year and is still below the long-term average. Northern pintail numbers decreased this year and are below the long-term average. In general, most Arctic nesting Canada goose and white-fronted goose populations continue to do well and numbers are stable. Similarly, population numbers for Atlantic and Pacific brant, as well as the eastern and western populations of tundra swans were generally similar to last year. However, populations of most light geese and temperate nesting Canada geese remain overabundant and their numbers are either stable or increasing. This year, conditions over most of the Arctic were favorable for nesting, except on the Yukon-Kuskokwim Delta in Alaska and on Southampton Island in Hudson Bay, where a late spring and severe flooding, respectively, limited production. Overall, the forecast for the production of geese and swans in North America is generally favorable. Well, while the duck breeding population estimates look good this year, many factors come into play that affect the number of birds that migrate south in the fall. 
Likewise, when and where waterfowl will be encountered this year depends upon many factors also, including weather, food availability, and local water conditions. All of these will influence duck abundance, distribution, and behavior. While we were very encouraged by the strong increases we saw in a number of species of ducks this year, we remain concerned about the challenges that ducks will face in the future. Many temporary and shallow wetlands were dry this year due to the lack of rain and the mild winters. These wetlands are crucial for successful duck production. Similarly, loss of upland nesting habitats across the prairie pothole regions continues to be a concern for the Fish and Wildlife Service and the conservation community. High commodity prices and other economic factors coupled with expiring conservation reserve program contracts have led to an increase in the number of acres of grasslands converted to cropland. Losing nesting habitat for ducks presents a huge challenge to ducks and other wildlife. Hunters and bird watchers alike should be very encouraged by the number of ducks this year, but we must not take our eyes off the conservation challenges that lay ahead. For more information about the population and habitat numbers, to access the Trends Report, and for much more information about the incredible world of waterfowl management across North America, visit the flyways.us website.